Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Good morning, boys. Welcome to our first uh, Hello, presentation. I can still hear some distortion in the background. Welcome to our first uh, English presentation, electronic learning. And uh, I trust and hope that this is going to be a pleasant experience for all of us. This is yes. a novelty. It is something new. And uh, it is also a learning curve for most of us. So we will be learning as we explore. Nevertheless, before I proceed with the lesson proper, I would like to establish a few ground rules so that you know what my expectations and what my requirements are. First and foremost, I would implore all of you to uh, maintain the highest amount of discipline. Secondly, there should be no distortion or any kind of noise coming from the background, meaning that you need to mute your microphones so that our presentation could be highly effective as possible. Thirdly, uh, in respect of inappropriate comments, right, as I pointed out, inappropriate comments or anything amusing, please try and refrain from that. Because as pointed out that our videos are recorded, they are posted on the website, and uh, we don't want any unpleasant situations whereby you are reprimanded. So let us have this, our presentations to run smoothly and effectively as possible so that we could, uh, our presentation could be highly beneficial, it could be highly productive, and at the end of the presentation, all of us really benefit tremendously. Okay, this morning, boys, I'm going to go over email writing because what I discovered that in the midterm examinations, there are still many of you who do not know how to write a proper email. You are either confused or you are not, you don't have any clarity about what to write in respect of the introduction, in respect of the body, in respect of the conclusion. And the structure of your email. Now remember, today I'm going to give you a few guidelines as to how to structure your email but before i start off now email what is email email is electronic writing unlike in the past previously if you could liaise with your parents or with your grandparents for example if they are still around right you'd find that they used to communicate email writing letter writing it was a means a medium of communication to convey your ideas and thoughts fruitfully. But many years back, we did not have the luxury or the convenience of technology. So many of us used to write, or our grandparents used to write, great grandparents used to write letters physically, go to the post office, post them, and then have them uh, uh, sent by a messenger or a postman to be delivered. Now, that is something of the past that is no longer used. It's an obsolete method. It is no longer in use. Due to with the advent of technology, everything has become convenient. Everything is easy nowadays. Just by the click of a button, we are able to communicate our ideas. If we have loved ones, if we have friends living abroad, etc., we use social apps, right? And now we have the email that's electronically, where you could write your letters and send the letters electronically. However, one thing is very clear, and I'm sure you would agree with me, boys, that our handwriting has deteriorated somewhat because we don't get enough practice to write. We are always typing. And if you have to draw a quick comparison with the handwriting of our predecessors or those well before us, you find that they had immaculate handwriting 
in comparison to us. And what's the reason for that? Is because they used to practice writing a lot of letters. But we don't. That is why our handwriting has somewhat deteriorated. So once again, I would like to urge all of you, I would like to implore that you also practice your handwriting because for the Cambridge examination, it is imperative, it is very important that your handwriting is legible. Examiners should be able to read what you have written. Otherwise, it is going to be a huge problem for everyone concerned. And if they cannot read what you have written, it means it's going to be a very costly and expensive lesson for you. So please keep that in mind. All right. Having said that, we are now going to move on to the topic at hand. I will give you the platform or the forum a bit later. I will open that for discussion where you could air your views. Um, if you have any queries or you'd like to make uh, known your opinions, etc., you'd have time for that. And you've given time also to give us your suggestions, your feedback, your ideas concerning certain prompts relevant to the topic and so forth. Because during my lesson time, I would also like you to be active recipients. I would not like to see, I don't want to see passive recipients. I would like all of you to participate actively so that our lesson could be very, very productive indeed. Okay, now the topic that I have at hand here, I want you to listen if you have the topic I just told you. Uh, the topic is from the 2013 October November variant 22, the email. Those of you don't have the topic at hand, I would very quickly read the topic to you so you have an idea and we'll go over step by step, right? The different uh, components required to write an effective email. What are the mechanics involved? Mechanics, components. how do you organize, how do you write an effective email? Okay, right. I want you to listen to the topic. Topic says, recently you were disappointed because you didn't get something you had worked hard for. Write a letter to your friend about this experience. In your letter, you should. Now, we have three prompts. The first prompt in your letter, you should firstly describe what you had worked hard for. Give us a description. Secondly, explain why you didn't get it. And thirdly, say what you have learned from this experience. So these are the three most important things or that you need to encapsulate in your email writing. Remember, you need to be specific, you need to be precise, to the point, right? Your writing should be concise, there should be uh, no deviation. Now, what I've noticed and why, I've, why I'm doing email today is what I've noticed that in your midterm exams and previously, many of you misconstrue the topic. In other words, you cannot analyze or interpret the topic correctly. And when you don't understand the topic, you don't have thorough knowledge or understanding of the topic itself, it means you are going to go off at a tangent. You're going to deviate in your writing. And when you do so, it's going to, as I said, it's going to be a costly experience for you because you are going to lose marks. Therefore, you need to be precise to the point. And in your writing, you also need to be succinct, meaning short, precise, and to the point. Right. When you start now in the email writing, I want you to listen to this very carefully because this is where the confusion sets in. This is where many of you have this confusion. And I'd like to clarify this with you in today's presentation. When you start your email, 
you've got to start with what we call or what is referred to as a salutation. Salutation means a greeting. Are you clear? Right? Salutation is a yeah. For example, you are going to say, dear so and so. And you are going to greet, because remember, this is an email. It is informal writing. Your style has to be informal and conversational. So you've got to start with a salutation, with a greeting, right? And it has to be warm and very cordial. For example, uh, dear, let's say, Muhammad. I see my, this meeting will end in 10 minutes. It's giving me a time frame here. Yeah? This me meeting will end in 10 minutes. So after 10 minutes, I'll have to give you a new link. Is that clear? Are you with me? Yes. You're right. Okay. Yes. yes right. Sir. Okay. Now coming back to the salutation. So here you've got yes. to. We said salutation is a greeting where you are going to greet, right, in a very warm, cordial manner. For example, of uh, dear Muhammad, um, it's been quite some time that I've heard from you. Oh, I haven't written to you for quite some time. Full stop. Oh, I hope you are keeping well. Oh, I'm giving you the different options. How have you been? I haven't heard from you recently. Perhaps you may be occupied. Oh, I'm giving uh, another option. Um, I'm, uh, I'm sorry that I could not write a letter to you as I was busy studying for my IGCSE examinations. Now that my exams are over, I have ample time at my disposal to pin a few words to you. Now, these are some of the options available to you. So the salutation would be basically the greeting. Once you have completed that in one paragraph, then you will move on to the next paragraph now. Now, this paragraph will be the introductory paragraph, which is also referred to as the thesis statement. It's called the thesis statement because here you need to establish the purpose of your writing. Are you clear? Hmm. Do this one more time. The first paragraph is where you are going to read. It's called the salutation. Then the second paragraph is the introductory paragraph which is also referred to as the thesis statement in the thesis statement you must clearly state the purpose of your writing why are you writing this email or this letter to your friend and the topic states very clearly right we'll go back to the topic for reference that you were disappointed because you didn't get something you had worked hard for. Are you clear? So you could write something about that, right? Staying disappointed. Now, remember, disappointment is an emotion, right? It shows that you are not satisfied with something or it brings about some kind of negativity. So you've got to start with that point. Then in your next paragraph, you've got to start with the prompts now. The first prompt, describe what you had worked hard for. What did you work hard for? Let's hear from some of you. What could it be? Example? I, I worked hard for a bit. Yes, proceed, Saad. Um, Like I worked hard for my exams, but like I failed in my exams. Yes. Okay. That could be one of the reasons that you are going to cite that you worked extremely hard for the examinations and the end result was not so pleasing, right? Perhaps yes. Yes. you did not fail, but you did not receive the expected grades. 
or your grades. Exactly. Yes, right? Your grades, yeah. the grades that you received or that you achieved were very, very disappointing. Okay, so you are going to tell us something about, describe what you had worked hard for. So that's good, Saad, you have given us one. Uh, could we move on to someone else who, who could perhaps give us another example? Sir, Mahir, Mahir. Yes, Mahir, let's hear from you. Describe what you had worked hard for, Mahir. And you were disappointed because the end result was not as what you expected it to be. So could you give us one example, Mahir? Hello. Yes, Mahir, yes. I am losing an international competition. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Could you could you elucidate? Could you elaborate on that, Mahir? Uh, for example, an international competition could be a spelling bee competition or a debate or speech competition. And after year, uh, like after uh, arduous efforts, uh, I wasn't able to emerge victorious in the competition. So that could be a decision. Hey, Maher, you ranked first in speech competition. Don't lie. Okay, I don't want any. Uh, listen, while, when the speaker is speaking, there should be no interruption whatsoever. Give him the platform to speak. Right, continue, Mahir. Are you done? Yes. Okay, so Mahir has given us one example, uh, the spelling bee, where he worked extremely hard and he was not victorious or successful. So this left him disappointed. All right, so that is what you are going to describe in your first prompt. Uh, the second prompt, explain why you didn't get it. Now you've got to give us a reason why you didn't get it. Any suggestions? Carelessness. Yes. Carelessness. Carelessness. Okay. Carelessness. Could that be? Uh, could that be attributed to nervousness? Because remember, you are in a different scenario, a different situation, uh, under different circumstances, and you could be. Um, nervous, you could be tense, right? You could be pressurized, under stress, etc. Maybe it's the first time that you have entered a competition of this nature. So, all these factors could impact on your performance because we are talking about emotions here, disappointment. Are you clear? Yeah. Right, good. So explain why you didn't get it. So you are going to tell us why, right? You are going to give us some of the reasons why you did not, due to being nervous. It was your, oh, stage fright, as we could refer to it, right? The first time that you participated in a competition of this nature and so forth. The, looking at the last prompt, say what you have learned from this experience. Before we move on to this, you'll note that the meeting, uh, the presentation may end abruptly. So uh, I would like to request all of you to exercise a lot of patience till I could give you a new link and we could resume our lesson. Is that clear? Right? As I said initially, all of you should be very, very patient, right? And maintain the highest amount of dis discipline. And remember, sure, sure. our videos are recorded for quality purposes. They are posted on the website so that everyone could peruse this at the later stage. All right, coming back to our last prompt. Say what you have learned from this experience. Yes, could we have someone else, another participant? Because remember I said I want participants to be actively engaged. You should not be passive recipients, right? English is a very dynamic language. We need to motivate you, inspire you, encourage you to come forth and express your ideas freely. And this is going to actually develop uh, your confidence and your uh, improve or ameliorate your communication and conversational skills. Right, the last prompt. Say what you have learned from this experience. 
uh, that we should never be indolent uh, during the time of our lessons or we should be uh, like very stimulated to, to our teachers okay, in case of right. studies. So Saad has made a very invaluable contribution, meaning very, very important contribution, right? We should never be indolent, meaning we should not be lazy. We should not be apathetic. Apathetic meaning indifferent or nonchalant, meaning having a don't care attitude towards anything, right? Once we subscribe, we should give it our all our very best, right? We should give a very good, one, excellent account of ourselves. Are you clear? Right. Have you got all guys on board? Yes. Yes. Right. Good. <laughs> right. Uh, we continue with our presentation, and as pointed out earlier on or initially or right at the outset of the lesson, you've got to exercise a lot of patience so that our lessons could be highly productive and very, very beneficial. Thank you once again. Let's uh, proceed. So we have discussed uh, the last prompt, say what you have learned from this experience. Did we discuss that or did we stop at this? Okay, we, we had one comment from Saad. No, we yes, did discuss. We had one comment from Saad stating that, uh, stating, uh, is it recording? Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, we did have one comment from Saad stating that we should never be indolent, meaning that all of us should not be apathetic. We need to be uh, very positive. We need to be optimistic at all times, and we need to maintain a lot of self-confidence in order to achieve our desired objectives or goals. <coughs> Are you clear? Yes. Right. Is there yeah. anyone else who would like to make any uh, pertinent comment with regard to the last problem that we have? Say what you have learned from this experience before we proceed before we move on Faris, could you give us uh, your thoughts about prompt number three say what you have learned from this experience okay far is not coming through ajwat could we have you, Ajwad? Yes, sir. Yes. Could you tell us what are your thoughts about the last prom? Say what you have learned. Um, <clears throat> I could say that uh, I learned. I learned a lot from my mistakes and. Uh, to be very careful. Very good. Every situation. Yes. So in other words, that if you when you make a mistake, you should not despair because it is a learning curve. It's a learning curve for, learning curve for us. Process. That's why yes. we should learn from the mistakes. We should learn from our mistakes. It's a stepping stone to success. Failure is a stepping stone to success, meaning yes. it's not the end of everything. You understand? We need to learn. We need to do some kind of introspection. We need to go back to the drawing board and re-examine where we went wrong. We need to rectify our mistakes so that we could ameliorate, improve, and so that these mistakes could not recur. Are you clear? Yes. Yes, thank you very much, Adwat, for that. Uh, we've taken cognizance of that. We've taken note of that as well. Right, and now we have discussed the email itself, and I would just like to go to uh, or oh, draw your attention to the length. What I've also noticed is that many of you are not writing according to the prescribed or the desired or the required length that is between 150 and 200 words long. 
Now, when we say 200 words, it does not mean that you should write up to 200, right? Nothing prevents or stops you from exceeding 200. But remember, if you are writing lengthy uh, emails, the focus should be on quality as well, right? Focus should also be on quality. Um, quality. Yes, the uh, mark allocation is 19. There is 10 marks will be given for content, right? How effective your content is, whether you have satisfied all the criteria, whether you have answered the topic to the best of your ability, and as per the question or the point, the other nine marks would be for your language style, accuracy, meaning your language usage, grammar, tenses, spelling, vocabulary, and so forth. Now, these are, all, these are some of the important components that play a very important role in order for you to get a good grading. Let's take vocabulary as, uh, let's just take one aspect, vocabulary. Right, and now vocabulary should come naturally and spontaneously. Basically, your writing should be clear, understandable, in simple, good language. That's one. Two, to bring in creativity to your writing, you've got to make use of good vocabulary that is called lexical resource, your lexical resource, or diction, D-I-C-T-I-O-N, right? Referring to good vocabulary usage. It brings about creativity, and when you are able to do so, that is expressions, good phrases, and when you are able to do so, you are able to leave an indelible impression on the mind of the examiner the person who is marking your paper right so that's very important and the other thing is that when you are introducing your introduction and your conclusion they must be captivating i've used the word captivating captivating meaning that it must be stimulating it should be able to capture the attention of the reader making him interested spur him to read on. He wants to read on. So introduction has to be captivating, so he would like to read on. Conclusion is also very important because now you're rounding up your uh, email or your essay if you have, for, the, uh, for example, but here we are dealing with the email, so your rounding up conclusion has to be effective as well, so that eventually it has, leaves, and I uh, use the word, indelible impression on the mind of the examiner because after the conclusion, he is going to evaluate, he is going to grade, give you a score. So that is very important and keep that in mind as well. Now let us go to uh, your writing itself. When you are doing your writing, you're coming to the planning preparation. Many of you do not plan or prepare. You simply start writing and then once you have completed, you want to present this your paper to the examiner, you just want to hand it in and rush off. Now that is not the correct technique or procedure. When writing an email, the first thing you've got to do is to interpret and analyze. Understand the topic at hand. Know what the topic requires of you. If you don't know that, then you are going to write off the topic. And I've seen that, I've noticed that with many of you writing off the topic, writing things which are irrelevant, just filling in space. Right? Now remember, examiners will take note of that. So the first point is to analyze and interpret the topic, study the topic carefully. And that is called, then look at all the relevant or pertinent facts, all the ideas which are related to the topic itself. That is called brainstorming. You are going to brainstorm the topic. Look at all the different angles, all the possible ideas. You need to explore all the different avenues. Once you have done that, you are going to plan and prepare. 
planning and preparation means you've got to write down your first draft. <clears throat> what are you going to do? Write down your first draft. Why is it important to write a draft first? I will come to this now in a few moments. First, you are going to plan, prepare, have all the salient points, the most important points, and you need to encapsulate, right? Meaning your essay must revolve around these important points or salient points. So that is why planning and preparation is vitally important. It is imperative that you have something of this nature, a plan before you start writing. After you have completed your draft, very important, and this is what many of you tend not to do. I've noticed this. So I'm advising you here and urging you very strongly not to do this in future. Okay. After writing your first draft, many of you just hand in or you just enter into your final uh, copy and you present to the examiner. Don't do that. After writing the first draft, you are going to do what we call proof reading and editing. Meaning you've got to proofread. You've got to read your draft. Right? Give it a reading. You've got to edit. You've got to check. That is what editing means, checking. Now, what do you check for? When you proofread, what do you check for? You are going to check for high frequency errors or mistakes that you have made. And very often, we think that our essays or our emails are the ideal ones. So there's no need to check. That's a mistake we make. Or in the examinations, we feel that we are fighting for time. We just need to submit without checking. No, dear boys, you must do this. After writing your draft, you proofread, you edit, you check for mistakes, check for spelling mistakes, uh, language mistakes, tenses, etc. And you'll be surprised as to how many mistakes you'll be able to pull out. But many mistakes that you'll be able to identify. And if you if you have to add up all these mistakes, it's going to cost you a lot of marks. Therefore, please check. That's called proofreading, editing. You've got to check, edit, and then once that is done, you write it out one more time, give it a quick reading, and then you'll... I know all this is time-consuming, but you've got to learn to devise your time, to manage your time comfortably. This is called good time management. This can only come about with a lot of practice. If you practice a lot of past year papers with the following uh, techniques in mind, right? You've got to uh, actually try and master these skills. And they can only come with practice, as I said. If you don't practice them, you're not going to perfect yourself. I fear. So once you have completed that, then you will submit all right do you have any questions now right with regards to the conclusion effective conclusions conclusion coming from the word conclude meaning that you need to round up right you need to sum up now and some of you uh, tend to sum up very very abruptly or you don't use your conclusion or you don't use effective conclusions Right. Some of the examples, as I've given you, as I've given you options in the uh, salutation, a few options in the conclusion. Okay, you could say, um, I need to dash off now. I have a lot of chores to attend to, or I have a lot of homework to complete, or I, I still need to study for a test that I need to write it tomorrow, uh, or some other reasons you could give. You understand? But it has to be. A, an effective conclusion. Right? Until next time, say. Until next time, stay safe. Or oh, I'm looking forward uh, to your response. Or please reply at your earliest convenience. Or please reply as soon as possible. I know you are busy, but please, I will appreciate it if you could re reply as soon as possible. Or if you could write a letter to me, giving me news about your side.
are you clear and then yes, you say your friend or uh, your loving friend right and then you put down your name don't write now many of you you are losing marks for this remember please keep this in mind many of you you are losing marks for this this may seem to be trivial to you it may seem to be trivial but remember it's a mistake and you don't write such things in informal writing because there is a clear distinction between informal writing and formal writing now we are talking about informal conversational right email so you say your friend and you put down your name don't write yours sincerely yours faithfully you don't write that don't you write yours sincerely or yours faithfully in formal writing in a business letter right for example when you're writing to the ceo of a company or the rector of a university etc right or director of a company and so forth then you use yours sincerely or yours faithfully but when you're writing to a friend informal letter an email right it's got to be your friend your loving friend and your name that's it no sincerely or faithfully please keep that in mind that's another confusion that creeps in and many of you are still doing that you are still writing like that you don't know how to end your letters properly so you've got to end properly right conclude in a proper manner and then you'll be able to get a good rating and also take note take note many of you are using vocabulary incorrectly when i say using vocabulary vocabulary incorrectly meaning you are using incorrect words so please be care careful about that as well if you don't know the word use a simpler word if you feel you're comfortable and you are quite certain is the correct word that you're going to use then use the word because then it will bring out bring about creativity but if you are using incorrect words etc then forget that right avoid repetition avoid redundancy and so forth because once again you're losing marks your tenses keep to one tense if it requires a past tense write in the past tense and check what tense is required of you okay and spelling this is a huge problem many of you are spelling incorrectly i don't know why if you don't know how to spell write out the word one or two times in pencil at the back of your paper you can erase that later until you are certain about the correct spelling of the word and then you write the correct spelling because many of you i don't know perhaps you're uh, you know out of carelessness maybe you're careless you just spelling um, incorrectly so you've got to re-examine that because it's very important that you spell correctly as well otherwise it's going to cost you a lot of marks eventually um sir can i ask something yes yes who is speaking uh, mahir yes mahir um in the cambridge uh, website uh, they stated that uh, igccs are cancelled and the decision for grading us will be taken on march 26th okay all right <clears throat> you came uh, you came across that on the cambridge website mahir yes okay right now what do you want me to do you want my thoughts on that yes i want your opinion okay actually mahir uh, regretfully i'm not uh, hello yes sir i'm listening yes uh, regretfully mahir i'm not uh, in a position or i'm not qualified at this point in time to make uh, any comment uh, with regards to this about the cancellation of the cambridge examination although you have seen it on the website but nothing official has come to us from the british council yes fine okay but nothing official has come to us from the british council or from our school until such time we receive some kind of directive from the british council guiding us as to what we should do then only can we comment further or if any directive from the uh, coordinator british council coordinator from our school giving us some kind of directive of or guideline after he has liaised with the british council and he has 
been given sufficient information as to what the status quo would be or what the modus operandi would be, method of operation, then only we'd be able to comment. But for now, it's just on um, the uh, notification that has come out. Uh, I think we should be uh, patient to wait for some clarification from the British Council itself or from the school itself giving us further guidance or further guidelines. So do we study now? Well, Mahir, a question of that nature coming from you surprises me because you should be studying at all times. Studying, right? Do we study? Studying, you know, that day you should be studying at all times. Every minute of the day you should be studying. Right? You should be keeping yourself gainfully, profitably occupied. You should be studying at all times because there is no end to studies. There is no end. Right? So you must continue with your studies. And in fact, you should be spending more time. Don't think that it's time for you to uh, relax now or, you know, to just chill, if I could say. Right? It's time for you to exert yourself more than ever before because we don't know what the future holds in store for us. Announcements could be made at any time. We don't know what the announcements could be and then we should not be uh, you know, caught at the last moment where we are going to regret our actions. So therefore, we need to have a second string to our bow. It's an expression. We need to have a second string to our bow. In other words, we need to have a backup plan as well. Are you clear, Mahir? Mahir? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. good. All right. Right, okay. Are there any other questions that you have for me, boys? If you don't have any further questions, then... I would like to assign a practice task for you so that you could work with this, right? And I would say- Sir, 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 sir. Yeah. Start, start, start. Start, yes, start. <coughs> uh, sir, uh, can we do speaking? Sir, oh, no, can Thursday. we do speaking uh, in this way? Like every day for at least one hour? Okay, uh, I would okay, have to, Thursday. yes, Saad, it's a good suggestion, uh, actually, to give you guys the opportunity and exposure to try and improve your speaking skills, because um, we don't interact much nowadays. The only time we interact is during our online presentations. And you do have a very valid point, is that to give you some kind of exposure to uh, speaking uh, uh, component so that you could uh, develop, you could strengthen your speaking, your communication, your conversational skills. So I will be looking at this and most probably on Thursday, we would do some speaking and take it from there. Because remember, this is a whole new concept for us and we need to experiment and see how it goes. And uh, based on the success of that, I'm sure it will hold us in good stead uh, for the future. So on Thursday, we will do speaking. Okay. All right, fine. But today, um, as practice exercise, because I see the uh, lesson will end in a few minutes. Uh, today, as practice, I would like you to go over or practice the topic that was discussed with you, with the guidelines given to you, how it was explained, the requirements, and so forth. So the topic was explained it's the october november 2013 email variant 22. <clears throat> recently you were disappointed because you didn't get something you had worked hard for write a letter to your friend about this experience your letter you should a describe what you had worked hard for two explain why you didn't get it and three say what you have learned from this experience are you clear? Yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Sir. So, if you have any further questions, I could address that. If you don't, then 
we could end our presentation. If you do have any, as we said, as pointed out, uh, suggestion by uh, Saad that uh, we should do some speaking on uh, our next lesson, I guess, is on Thursday, right? Yes, our next lesson will be on Thursday. Uh, we'll do uh, some Thursday what time? Uh, Thursday, you've got to check your schedule, grade 10 on a Thursday, same time, 10 to 11. Okay. But 10 to 11, so we'll give you the, the platform, right? And it'll be a good uh, platform for you to speak, to express your views, uh, to be given the opportunity to be conversational and uh, improve your skills. It's imperative that you improve your skills because all of you know that you'd be applying for admission to universities abroad someday and all universities across the globe you know that english is a universal language but it is used for uh, as a means of communication uh, for your lectures and so forth therefore you need to be you need to actually improve your skills with regards to that Sir, okay. I have a question. yes what's your question who is speaking Okay, never mind. Address, what's your question? No questions? Uh, sir, I had a question. Okay. Um, you had, sorry, okay. but you no longer have. <laughs> I mean, okay. I, I have a question. <laughs> All right. Sir, could you please... Uh, uh, explain uh, some uh, explain some report writing and uh, review writing. Report writing and so the book review. review. Yeah, okay, keep... fine. Uh, as I told you, we are starting off uh, component at the time. The first component I discussed with you was email. The next one would be a report. Then we move on to article. Then review gradually over a period of time. One period, one period per week will be allocated for that, the other period for speaking. Is that in order or should I amend my plan? No, that's fine, sir. Is that in order? Yes. Yes. Okay. So we will, in our next lesson, not Thursday, because Thursday we said for speaking. In the next lesson, next week, we will do report writing and then subsequently article reviews and so forth. Are you clear? Yes. But supplementary to that, we will also have our speaking. Okay? Yes, sir. All right. Yes. All right, time's up. Thank you very much, boys. Actually, uh, it was a pleasure doing my presentation with you today. Uh, I would like to, um, you know, uh, compliment all of you for your participation, those who participated, I would like to compliment you uh, on your excellent behavior and uh, the manner in which our presentation was done, the response that I received, etc. And if you can have such good response in the future, uh, if you could have such good response, everything is going to augur well for us in the future. Once again, thank you very much. Uh, have a blessed day. Sir, and stay safe.